Ghetto Suguru, the worst of all curse users and one of the most pivotal characters in the series of Jujutsu Kaisen. Both in Ghetto's life and death, he has impacted the JJK world, but perhaps the most sad thing about Ghetto's life is how he changed and how his path has led to a fate probably worse than death. And today we are going to look into the deeper character of Ghetto and the impact that he has left onto the story. Ghetto's downfall is something so tragic, but if we were to rewind time and look back at Ghetto's past and his career as a sorcerer, we see how ironic it is that Suguru chose the path that he chose. Ghetto had the qualities of a perfect Jujutsu sorcerer. He was very kind, he was patient, stoic, respectable, and he always looked out for others and made sure to present himself in a way that a sorcerer should. He was a model student, a strong fighter, and an excellent shaman. Ghetto upheld the creed to look out for the weak and protect others, even non-sorcerers. So often, Ghetto and Gojo had a bit of rivalry when it came to their beliefs as sorcerers. They were relatively closer in strength when they were students, and Ghetto was the one who swallows his pride and looks out for the weak, while Gojo finds a shaman's responsibility useless and kind of irrelevant. He scoffs at that idea. Nevertheless, even though they may have fought, even though they've always had their differences, Gojo and Ghetto were best friends, and they were the strongest in their era of Jujutsu sorcerers. It's just that when one gets to a certain level of strength, their outlook on the world may change, since they have the power to change it. So eventually, when Toji Fushiguro happened, and the sorcerers faced their greatest loss and let Riko die, that event affected Ghetto a lot deeper and more than it affected Gojo, because it's as if their strength was tested but Gojo is the one who rose to the occasion. He was the one to reach the peak of sorcery. And it's not out of hate or spite, but because Gojo was the honored one, literally a god among them. Not to say they didn't have a share of grief because spending time with Riko Amanai was golden. That's the kind of future Gojo and Ghetto wanted to protect. And when they failed, both Gojo and Ghetto knew their lives would never be the same. They learned that the very hard way of what being a sorcerer really is, and both of them have changed. Ghetto was always known to be this stoic, righteous character, but now we start to see a bit of his imperfections. Because Ghetto lost the Toji, he got the impression that humans are like monkeys. Toji literally impressed that into Ghetto's character, whether he knew it or not. So now Gojo is the one who did his part and killed Toji. He ascended as a sorcerer and Ghetto had to shortly recover from his loss, feeling terrible. He couldn't really do anything. And then we see that damn scene. The Star Plasma Cult clapping over the death of Riko Amanai. This scene made Ghetto. He probably had the worst day of his life letting Rico die and losing, but now he had to look at all the disgusting faces of humans applauding the sorcerer's defeat over the death of a 14-year-old girl. And this event marks the shift in Ghetto's character. Gojo had already come to terms with what was happening with himself as well as the situation, and he was done. Do you want to kill them all? Right now, I probably wouldn't even feel anything. This is the subtle dilemma Gege has set up with their relationship because it's Suguru justifying himself to uphold the moral principles of a sorcerer. Even if that's the last thing he wants to do, they just have to do it and they have to have restraint as sorcerers. And what they're talking about with murdering the cult is probably what they deserve, but it's the fact that Ghetto is reasoning with himself and Gojo looks to him because Ghetto is the one who always preaches the moral code for shamans to protect the weak and stay on their high horse as better people. So they just leave things as they are. But that image stayed with Ghetto. Ghetto is starting to slip. He's growing out of that mentality of protecting the weak because now he sees what he's protecting. 
the ugly side of non-sorcerers and he's different because of that. What's worse is that life just continues to move all around him. The cycle of curses continue. Gojo has now evolved into an immensely powerful sorcerer using his limitless and six eyes, so much so that Gojo is better. Gojo is at a level where he can handle anything himself as the strongest. It's not something bad, but Ghetto now feels the change in the air. The seasons are changing. His friends are changing, growing older. Curses are swarming. Ghetto has found himself in a cycle of endless exorcism where he just does his job, kills curses, and keeps consuming them, suffering every day for these ugly humans that he swore to protect. He is losing his way. It's so dark that Ghetto is such a pure person, but when he has this feeling inside of him, it's like his core beliefs are lies. Humans are nothing more than monkeys. And Ghetto has to deal with those feelings alone because everyone around him is so busy with just being sorcerers. So when he finally opens up and shares his true feelings with an older senpai character like Yuki Tsukumo, shockingly, she actually encourages his ideals and never reprimanded Ghetto because she is also a character who has a lot to say about how things run and how things work around this JJK world and wants to solve the bigger picture. So she is more open-minded than most. A lot of fans want to blame Yuki for supporting Ghetto's ideals and not saying he's wrong or steering him in the right direction, but she was right. She was especially right about one thing. Ghetto couldn't keep feeling the way he does he has to choose. And like Yuki brought out, whatever your true feeling is, you have to decide. This is Ghetto's turning point. He saw the righteous course of being a sorcerer was meaningless. In the end, it came down to the hard truth that sorcerers suffer because of humans. Ghetto knows what it's like to take preciousness in looking out for the weak, and I'm sure at one point in his life, he had value in treasuring the lives of humans but now his way is being lost and it's much too unclear. I actually liked when Yuki said, you're not at that stage yet because he was in a state where Ghetto couldn't decide. But if you were to interpret that sense more broadly, not even Yuki is at that stage. Gege has no right or wrong in JJK. It's only how characters live their lives and use their own judgment. It all goes full circle with every character. Whether they curse, kill, save, protect, they all do the best they can to move forward. They just have to keep moving forward. And that's something really special and what I really love about this series. So after 2006, Ghetto started to mature as a sorcerer and he saw his classmates die and suffer like Nanami and Yu Haibara. He viewed his job as a sorcerer like a marathon to run, but at the end of the road is a mountain of his fellow sorcerers' corpses. It's dark. It's easy to understand just why. Why protect them? Why die for them? Why suffer for them? Why go through hell just to curse and be cursed for these monkeys? Is what Ghetto's feeling wrong? because it's not uncommon to want more as a sorcerer. That's why Jujutsu High School exists, to guide the youth from becoming curse users. But as we know, the system has failed Ghetto. On Ghetto's last mission as a sorcerer, September 2007, in a unknown village, an incident occurred where there was abnormal deaths and kidnappings of villagers involving a curse. However, the spirit responsible was thought to be exorcised. But due to the negligence and cruelty of human nature, the villagers decided to blame two innocent sorcerer children, Nanako and Mimiko Hasaba. This was the last and final straw. Ghetto had seen more than enough to make his choice. He already witnessed the ugliness of human thinking, and now he sees the gross negligence and sheer stupidity that these monkeys have shown by caging up two innocent little girls, beating them cursing them and humiliating them like some animal. Echoing Yuki's words, 
Ghetto decides right there to save the children and kill all 112 residents in the entire village, slaughtered without hesitation. Ghetto is now a curse user and a wanted criminal who carried out his own justice, knowing full well what his actions meant. This is something I appreciate about how Gege writes Ghetto because he was and still is such a noble character, but his mind has been tainted and no longer sees the value in the lives that he protects. As one last gesture of faith with his peers, Ghetto lives as a criminal but goes to Shinjuku to meet his friend Gojo. Not to fight, not to argue or confess anything, but to talk. What's ironic is how teen Gojo is so insightful. Gojo is so powerful, yet he fails to see his friend slipping. He cannot understand it. Gojo can literally do anything he wants. He's so strong that nothing is an obstacle for him, yet he is still imperfect. So naturally, Gojo has a big falling out with Ghetto and tries to argue his point, but those two have now matured to a degree where their morals clash and it destroyed their relationship. Gojo is arrogant, impulsive, stubborn, and even selfish, but he never takes those traits and uses his power negatively or for evil, even if he may want to. Gojo uses his power to change things his way, but at the stage he's at now, it's very selfish that Gojo would be ignorant of those around him, really to use Ghetto's own moral judgment as his own. That's the way Gojo approaches Ghetto's new mindset. It's almost childish how strong Gojo is, but he has no solid moral ground. There's not an answer Gojo can give to change Ghetto. Ghetto even says, you can do it, Satoru. Why say it's impossible for him when Gojo can use his powers to do anything? If I could be you, wouldn't my impossible ideal become possible? Just from their short conversation, you can see Gojo doesn't even have a real understanding of his own position and the unfairness it presents to everyone else. As the strongest, he never has to. No one can tell Gojo what to do or how to do anything, including his own morals. But because of the school, his friends, what he was taught as the honored one, he's a relatively good person. I'd argue even Ghetto brought out a lot of good in Gojo. So it's that much more devastating when a true friend like Ghetto abandons his morals and loses his way as a Jujutsu sorcerer. It's the life he chose, so he's gonna give it all he's got. And then Gojo realizes something life-changing. Justly, Gojo had every right to kill Ghetto right then and there. Even if he had casualties using his technique, killing Ghetto would ultimately save more people. But despite any type of logic, Gojo could not kill his best friend. Gojo realized being strong is not enough. He can only save those who are prepared to be saved. This is how you write the strongest. And through Ghetto Suguru, we see the immense flaws in Gojo Satoru. I think the point Ghetto made is incredibly deep. Are you the strongest because you're Satoru Gojo? Or are you Satoru Gojo because you're the strongest? So now we see the dilemma of Gojo's position. Really, it makes Gojo iconic because being omnipotent is not without its problems. Does Gojo define the strongest or did his omnipotence come before his personality and strength? Because there can only be one Gojo. Ghetto is asking what defines him, Gojo himself or his power. So we get a picture of why Gojo grew up the way he is now. Not just as the most powerful sorcerer, but as a teacher, a foundation, a sensei everyone can look up to and even respect. He uses his authority to save others and lead the new generation to a better future. On the other hand, Ghetto Suguru wants to create a world of only sorcerer by the eradication of non-sorcerer humans, a horrific goal of mass genocide and evolution, but in theory, Ghetto is justified in a grand scope of things. It's incredibly tragic how their friendship had been corrupted by this jujutsu world. But Ghetto has found his true nature when he let himself become a curse user. Now that Ghetto had chosen his path, he really did give it all he's got. 
Ghetto is quite a bit different when he leaves Jujutsu Tech and grows up as a curse user. He is very expressive, philosophical, ruthless, and charismatic. Ghetto changed, but it's more like he stopped holding back what he truly felt. He fully embraced the ideals of shamanism and had a blatant bias towards non-sorcerers, which he calls monkeys. He considered humans primitive and used the religious assets like culture to acquire money, fame, followers, disciples, and curses, acting as a sort of false Buddha. He is objectively evil, but Ghetto is doing what he must to realize his new world, and eventually he goes to war with the Jujutsu Society in 2017. But what's interesting is how overall happier Ghetto seems when abandoning his old life. Even after the man killed his flesh and blood parents, Ghetto feels this is the right way to live. Ghetto found a new family. He even raised Nanako and Mimiko as a father. He had a support group of curse users who he loved and cherished more than anything. Ghetto is very complicated. On one hand, he is so evil toward the non-sorcerers and will destroy anyone who gets in his way for his ambition. But on the other hand, Ghetto is a leader and a father as well. Ghetto has spent nearly 10 years as a curse user. That's 10 years Gojo left Ghetto to live as a criminal. If Gojo actually made it a mission to kill Ghetto, I'm certain someone of Gojo's capability would be able to hunt and kill him. But Gojo held no particular resentment toward his friend. So even if their relationship was broken, they still had a bond. Even at the end of Suguru's life, he fought for his ideals and died with his pride intact. December 24th, 2017, Gojo acted as Ghetto's executioner. But this wasn't an act done through hate, but merely through responsibility as a Jujutsu sorcerer. Ghetto had threatened the lives of his students and the innocents of Japan, so he had to kill him. But it's important to note that Gojo held no ill will and still cared for Ghetto as a friend. Even his last words was something thoughtful about the bond that they shared, which is ironic considering the diverging paths they took as adults. Even after all this time, they still had a connection. Ghetto is Gojo's best friend and the one that he cherished, but he is also Gojo's weakness. Why? Because Ghetto is the one he failed to save. I wouldn't call it resentment, but there is definitely karma from the way Gojo felt about his friend that led to Kenjaku and even led to Gojo's own imprisonment. Kenjaku took advantage of Gojo's compassion and sincerity. When Ghetto was killed, Gojo saw to it that his body was preserved instead of being cremated. So as a result, Kenjaku has tarnished Ghetto's legacy and uses Suguru's dead body as a vessel. It's Gojo's own compassion for his best friend leading to the worst circumstances in Jujutsu history. There is no way Gojo would have been sealed by anyone else. Gojo would not have hesitated for anyone, but he stopped because he remembered his years with Ghetto Suguru. He dwelled on the bond that they had. And here we are today. Even in death, Ghetto is still the worst of all curse users and an enemy to the world of Jujutsu. Ghetto is likely the most tragic character in Jujutsu Kaisen because he was corrupted by the actions of non-sorcerers and was failed by the guidance of Jujutsu Tech. Not that it's anyone's particular fault, like Principal Yaga, Gojo, Yuki, etc. But Ghetto always felt dissatisfied no matter how noble he was as a shaman. He could not truly be happy from the bottom of his heart. So he chose his answer. Perhaps the most devastating part of Ghetto's life is how he was remembered and is being used today. Even his own adopted children with Nanako and Mimiko, the ones who truly knew him, have perished in Shibuya, tragically, senselessly, and his followers have moved on by continuing his will or just going down their own path altogether. And Kenjaku has taken Ghetto's body and is abusing Ghetto's legacy literally using his entire persona and his power as a means to an end. Maybe one day Ghetto will end this curse that has infected his body, but hopefully his soul can rebel against Kenjaku, 
because in a morbid sense, Gege has described Ghetto's soul like a dragonfly twitching post-mortem, but it feels like it's more to it than that. There's still a part of him inside that is still there, and I'm certain Ghetto feels resentful at the way that he's being used today, like some puppet, but only time will tell. Ghetto's life is very complicated, and he has lived a very dark and uncertain path as a sorcerer that shook the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. But finally, I love how Gege wrote Ghetto and how one character has been used in so many ways because in terms of relevance, Ghetto revolves around the entire story of Jujutsu Kaisen and is an especially pivotal character in the modern age of the JJK timeline. But with that being said, what do you brothers think about Ghetto Suguru? Do you guys think his soul will have some closure before the end of the series? Or maybe his legacy will be referenced again before it's all said and done. But this is my stand user. I'll see you awesome guys in the next one. Bye-bye.